Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone to another episode of Jim and Java. I'm excited to be here today with you for this next episode of Jim and Java on the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please join this ever-growing community of fundraising professionals, fundraising leaders who are interested in seeing income raised and their organization fully funded. And we are excited to respond to your questions. If you submit your questions, please do so at on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can always reach out to me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And of course, I'm out on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. So let's dive right into our first question today. Our first question today is from Jason in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And Jason asks, what are the best ways to engage your partners today? Well, we really find so often that our partners are beginning to be more and more a reflection of society in that what they are wanting from us is has always been the same, which has been frequent communication, but what is the form of communication that they want? Frequent communication can vary in so many ways. Uh, we know that in communicating on a frequent basis, there should be at a minimum at least one touch point, but more and more studies are showing that one to three touch points a month are effective number of times to communicate with your ministry partners. And as I said in the beginning, the mode that seems to be working best is that of video storytelling. I just read a recent study that showed that in 2020 that 82% of internet traffic is related to video content. Those are individuals watching videos. And in that same study, it showed that 29% of online donors listed social media as the communication tool that inspires them to give the most. And in addition to that, 27% of donors found inspiration to give through email communication. So even though we have not completely turned the corner on the hard copy snail mail communication, uh, that still needs to happen. That still needs to go out there. And even though your individuals 65 and above and really even 60 and above really does still need that hard copy communication that email and electronic communication is continuing to really really um, dominate the communication market at this point in time and people are relying on that more and more and your nonprofit if it is not communicating with donors from an electronic standpoint you're missing out that you're going to be left with the short straw on that one if you aren't careful. Some of the things that you should be looking at in your electronic online communication. First of all, of course, is your website. If you don't have a website in this day and age, you're missing out on a lot. And individuals, even individuals who raise their own funding, such as missionaries, they are finding more and more that having a website is important. Being able to tie your donors into a central website is very good, but even having a website that is your own, that highlights and features stories, pictures, videos of what you're doing will make a huge difference. So if you aren't already communicating with your partners through a website, that's extremely important. The next more important in there, the next in line would be social media. What are you doing in this day and age to communicate with your partners through social media? There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there is Instagram, and there are a wide variety of other ways to communicate people. And of course, the uh, channel that I enjoy a lot, which is on this, is YouTube. All those are highly effective ways to communicate your mission, vision, values, your stories, and the lives that are being changed as a result of gifts that your donors are giving to your organization. It's also important that you look at email marketing. If you aren't currently doing email marketing, I would highly recommend that. 
Uh, there are some easy platforms such as MailChimp that you can reach out to individuals. And I, in this day and age, finding someone who is under 30, who is a social media expert, or even someone who is an expert in social media, in other words, they, they don't do it for a living, but they understand the market and they know what to do, those are very easy to find. And if you feel uncomfortable communicating yourself personally, or if you just don't uh, don't feel up to, to speed and technology, bring on some of these people to do it. You may even be able to find someone who's willing to handle your social media as part of their donation to your organization. But if nothing else, uh, you can inexpensively hire someone to do it. And of course, frequency of communication on social media is very important. Uh, gone are the days when you post once a month or even once a week. If you aren't posting on social media at least once a day, uh, you're not going to get noticed. And that is very important. Now, I don't say that to overwhelm you. I don't say that to make you feel guilty. But I say that in that use those individuals who are social media experts. Don't be afraid to utilize someone who has a good understanding of the social media market and utilize their skills and talents. It isn't hard to post pictures, to post videos, to post messages frequently. Those things can happen. And I don't necessarily mean that you need to jump onto TikTok and be a dance expert. What I'm saying is get on some of the most frequently used platforms that will work for you and for your organization. If your organization is more comfortable on LinkedIn or on Facebook than it is on Instagram or TikTok, do that. But I would encourage you more and more professionals are going out to Instagram. And I would also look at that as a platform as well, too. Also, uh, please consider the option of direct mail. Direct mail still is an important option that you consider. Now, the biggest mistake that I feel like a lot of organizations make is they think, well, I don't read direct mail. Who reads direct mail? Well, I, I would tend to be in your camp if you don't read direct mail. I don't read a lot of direct mail, but I can tell you the department that I run does millions of mail letters every year. And we do so because there are individuals who read direct mail. There is an audience for direct mail and there still is money to be made in direct mail. Last year, our organization within my department alone made uh, grossed $4 million in direct mail. So there is money to be made within direct mail. And lastly, it's, um, it's important that you consider every option out there to be engaging with your partners. Don't neglect, of course, those personal relationships with people. But what you need to do is nothing will ever beat face-to-face and then second to that will be a phone call. But having that electronic and that mail communication is really your front line of defense for engaging with people. That's your front line, and that is where the greatest majority of people will hear. And then follow up that communication with either a phone call or a visit. And that's going to be your winning ticket to partner engagement. Jason, I hope that helped you, and I hope that helped everyone else who is interested in engaging with your partners. And that ends our latest episode of Jim and Java. Once again, I'd really like for you to join our community. We are seeing some exciting things happen. We're nearing 500 subscribers, which will allow us to be able to communicate as a community. And I really want to take my help and my guidance for you to the next level. So help me get to that 500 and then of course to the superior level, which is those thousand subscribers. So please hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, please hit the like. Comment down below if there was something that you specifically liked or if you have a question, certainly put that question down in the comment section. Of course, you can also send comments to me at my email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com on Twitter at devfs strats and use the hashtag Jim and Java and of course on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. So as I always say, we are here to strive to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you next week.